Hey, f hey folks, hey, here. Folk. All right, you're on. You're on. Thanks for tuning in, Packer Nation. This is episode number 28 of the Absolute Packer Podcast. And uh, I'm going to name this this podcast. It isn't over until Mr. Rogers says it's over. Uh, I think all Packer fans know what that means. But uh, tonight we've got a full crew. Uh, we don't have Andy. Um, Ooh, uh, oh, I need my boo button. I don't have one on here. Where is your boo button? Come on. <laughs> I expected that right off the bat, Elliot. Let's go. Well, we're using a new it. system because we had some audio trouble last true, night. So we're going to try something true. different. So hopefully true. this works out well. <laughs> Uh, just to give everybody a little update on Andy, um, he's doing significantly better. Um, actually, we've had some uh, um, private messaging in the past day um, and t day or two, uh, and he's doing significantly better. He's actually functioning as a human now. Um, he's not. Um, he wasn't. Uh, uh, he's taken out of his uh, medically induced coma, um, and he is on his way to. Um, uh, progressing and and, get, and getting a lot better than where he was at. So, um, Elliot and I are very thankful that he's uh, doing a lot better, and uh, hopefully uh, sooner than later he'll be back on and uh, providing his half hour of commentary uh, to uh, to our episodes. So, uh, <laughs> without further ado, I want to uh, see how my uh, other partner and uh, his guest are doing. Uh, Elliot, what's going on? I, I love that you said without further ado. That's an Andyism. Yes, yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy to have my friend Jay Hurdy on. Hey, Jay. Yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, glad to be here, uh, especially on such a perfect uh, post, uh, post game uh, podcast. Well, according to all the Chicago pap papers, you mean post apocalyptic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think uh, I, think I actually saw it. I, I, saw, I saw a Tribune. A headline so that it's it's actually not not too far from the truth sorry uh -huh. i cut you off no that's uh yeah it'd be fascinating to see what uh, chicago media says um I, having been having lived in chicago myself for a long time um who would appreciate the tribune and the sun times and uh and some of their personalities some really great writers over the years and um and of course um uh, and also people who have been objective not necessarily homers and uh so i would imagine they'll there's some great editorials as well as uh, great, you know, commentary and, and uh, articles on, on last night's game, especially. But um, I think that the bears have a, uh, have a, a, you could say a bright future. Uh, and I honestly think that even though the game was very exciting and, and Rogers was, uh, was, you know, uh, just glorious. Um, there is a sort of a, a cloud on the Packers horizon. So it could be uh you know, uh, as as Rogers would say, it's a work in progress. I would agree one hundred percent. Um, I, you know, and that's the thing is that the way that the McCarthy regime has kind of uh, uh, progressed here, um, the first four games of the regular season are kind of like the starters tune up to the season, you know, because mm -hmm. they don't play a lot of preseason uh, action. Um, so when they get into the regular season, that's why whenever I see the schedule come out and I see some tough opponents, like last year, I saw Seattle. And I'm like, Oh man, are you kidding me? Can we get like Cincinnati and, you know, <laughs> some bottom dwellers so that we can start off and, and at least not have, the competition like we did against you know seattle last year but um right. i think you're you're 100 correct jay that um i think fans um are very high about what happened last night and 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 the 24 to 23 come from behind victory over the bears um but there is some concern uh, i think very cognizant and uh um, understanding fans would realize that we are one and oh, but um, there were there were some serious concerns that showed up uh, in the first half, especially um, that we really should be worried about because now we have Minnesota coming in um, and they are fully loaded and ready to go, you know. Right. So, yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so go ahead, Jay. Sorry. Oh, no, I just uh, agree in there. Yeah, the, so I I was at the game and from so I have a different perspective I think than I would have if I had I watched the game on on TV like normal. Um, I I felt from the stands in the first half the defense was 
non-existent across the board. Everyone, like yeah. the entire defense, mm-hmm. uh, they they couldn't stop the run. They couldn't stop any. They couldn't stop the pass. They couldn't stop anything really consistently. Right. They they didn't pressure. Uh, what what's his name? Trubisky. I, mm-hmm. I probably got that. I probably got that wrong. Um, yeah. But I mean, there was no pressure on him. Like none, none. I mean, almost, almost even even when when things started turning around, there was very little pressure on Trubisky. Uh, you know, the the second half, if uh, they, I think they they stepped it up a little bit, sure. But um, I think the Bears were their own big bigger problem in the second half, offensively. Right. I think the I think the Bears. Uh, that I thought they brought uh, more aggression than than the Packers. I think were really in a way feeling their way around. Uh, I get it that uh, you know that you bring a new coordinator and it's going to uh, it's going to take some time. It's always been that way with the Packers. Um, when they've changed coordinators, especially on the defensive side. And it's usually that half season or so before, you know, the full, you know, the full impression of the coordinator's uh, concept kind of you know, you, before you see it. And, and, and again, I think that's kind of what, in a way, that's what, why there was a tale of two halves is, is in a way it was they're feeling their way around the first half and then they showed up in the second half. And I think that's what you want, but it was very frustrating um, that first half on both sides of the ball. And, and then um, on a more technical level, it, it appears the Packers don't, don't teach or understand how to tackle. <laughs> Again. Yeah. I mean, okay. So I, I like to, to, you know, be uh, sort of um, open-minded about that because I understand the changes in how the NFL is approaching tackling, right? The, all the, the safety issues. And if, so I feel like the Packers take that to heart, maybe a little too much uh, mm-hmm. that, that there is, that there is that lack of aggression uh, that, yeah. that, that we don't see. And it's very, it's frustrating to me when, um, you know, and some of it is, is certainly uh, skill and, you know, maybe practice or, or whatever, but it is frustrating when, they, they okay they 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 don't aggressively make a tackle but then you know the next play there's a penalty and i'm like eh, that was kind of a borderline penalty <laughs> so yeah. i you know I, I do feel like there was a little bit of that and i think that uh and but you know it's a new season for everybody and it's you know new new rules and you know updated rules so like that's that 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 pass only goes so far uh okay. even though it is the first game so yeah. I would I would agree with both of you guys. And I'm going to bring up a personnel standpoint. Um, six defensive backs were the majority of their um, defensive uh, uh, formation. Um, and so what does that all mean? That they don't have confidence in their linebackers to cover mm-hmm. two dynamic uh, running yeah. backs coming out of the backfield. And that's a, that's a huge concern because when we go up against teams like Minnesota and the play action comes out, we're going to have six defensive backs going up against monsters of the, you know, of these, these, uh, these offensive linemen and these uh, fullbacks that can just pull you over. And I worry that we're going to lose in the trenches when we have six defensive backs out there. Um, not saying that they can't do it, not saying that they're un- they are capable, um, but there is the law of physics. And when you have a 325 pound guy going up against a 190 pound guy, Usually the 325 pound guy will dominate the 190 pound guy. So that's what I'm concerned about that. um, Predominantly it was a, uh, a a redo of the capers era that he likes to use um, a lot of defensive backs to counteract the speed that the offense can put out there on their side, you know, uh, like the bears can with Cohen um, and Howard. Yeah. So was. (laughs) What I, I feel like sometimes I miss things, um, but you know, kind of having that bird's eye view, I feel like they, you know, sometimes I think, okay, so they're trying, they're they're anticipating the run, so they're you know focusing in on that, and maybe they, you know they got smoked on on a pass play, or they were expecting you know the 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 ball to be handed off quicker, so they didn't pressure the quarterback any or whatever whatever the deal is, that it, it, it's a it's a matter of. Uh, anticipating incorrectly but it seemed like they never either never got that right or they just didn't have any there was no pressure at any point on the field so i i i don't uh i i i don't think that minnesota's 
really that much better offensively, honestly. Like, uh, you know, I watched them play San Francisco, and I feel like they were, they were fine. I mean, the Bears played pretty well, I have, I, I think. Yeah, they so, did. So I, I guess I'm not super worried necessarily um, right. on that side of the ball, but I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I think that Nagy is a uh, – he's a pretty good offensive mind, and, and I think he let Mitchell Trubisky uh, – uh, he, you know, he let him play his game a bit. And I think Trubisky showed that he has some, some guile and some poise, uh, and some ability, of course. He's, you know, he's got, he's got a little size to him and he can, he can, sh- uh, shred a tackler or two, um, and, and also move in space. Uh, but I don't think he presented that much of a problem where they, you know, where they, uh, where they showed how, how difficult it was to cover. Uh, and uh, keep him in a pocket or to keep at least, how should I say it, uh, uh, keep those ends, um, you know, uh, you know, closing that space uh, on both, both sides of the field. And, um, and so I, I think the Bears presented them, uh, presented some problems that um, maybe Pedden either didn't anticipate, uh, maybe because it was the first game of the year, um, and because most teams don't show what kind of game they play during the preseason. So I, I think there was a little surprise early. Um, and I think the Bears showed that they have some some players now, that they have some talent that they didn't have maybe even last year. And uh, uh, But at the same time, I think the Packers' vanilla sort of preseason scheme uh, uh, didn't really provide uh, any kind of concept that – that we recognize and then the players themselves that is Packers players um, again I think technically failed to make plays on defense for the whole first half and um, and it was kind of alarming for a while there and then, and then all the while the deficiencies of of uh, Aaron Rodgers and the offense in the first half again was alarming um so I was talking to my brother on the on the way to the gym today, and uh, he was talking about. Uh, I guess he he heard somewhere that uh, somebody made the comment that the the Bears kind of pulled out offensively, uh, like you know, deep into their bag of tricks. Mm-hmm. And and uh, of course, you know, we don't have a bag of tricks. We have Aaron Rodgers. So, but but uh, you know, I thought that was an interesting perspective. There were some you know complicated enough looking plays from the bears. Um, but you know, maybe they've shown their hand on everything now and they really were counting on a win here, <laughs> you know? So the, so there is part yeah. of that, I think. I would agree with you because I think, I think coming out and that, I think that can be attributed to why Pedden came out very vanilla with his defense is he knew that Nagy, uh, his, his tie back to Andy Reid in Kansas city um, is a lot of misdirections, uh, stack formations, you know, basically being really exotic with your alignments to try to take advantage of certain personnel strengths and weaknesses that you may have. So instead of going man up against the bears starting off, you know, let's let's say, for example, we went man up um, on T- Tariq Cohen, which in the fourth quarter there, uh, it actually worked to our benefit on Reggie Gilbert's case. I won't get into that. But anyway, so, I mean, you know, if we go man up where we have a disadvantage, I, I could see the Bears really just jumping out on us even more than what they already did. So I think Pedden was just feeling out the game plan, trying to get an idea of where they were coming from. And and I think you guys said it, uh, your brother said it too, where they pulled out all of the tricks out of the hat in the first half and the second half, they didn't have anything else to pull from, you know? So, but I, I also think too, they, beca- they became very, uh, they took the foot off the pedal. You know, they were very, um, they, right. They had confidence that they're, that they're, defense would be able to just hold us uh, because Aaron was less than a hundred percent, you know? So I really feel like they took their foot off the pedal in the second half because they were running the ball a lot more, um, which I told you, Elliot, that the bears were going to do, you know? So what was it? I don't know. You know, I think it was a little combination of Pettin just feeling it out. And I think the bears really took their pedal off the, off the gas. I don't know why they ever stopped running. I mean, they're able to just run right over the Packers. Right. They, they, I, it wasn't until the fourth quarter where, like, they didn't always gain on a on a run. Like, why would you just not it, <laughs> just keep it's going? A, <laughs> it's a scary thought because the Packers, I think, did invest in their 
um, their defensive line this year mm-hmm. uh, with Muhammad Wilkerson. And I think um, their, I think the expectation was that they would, that would be their strength. And then they would use that uh, hopefully forcing down a distance, but then, uh, you know, and then getting exotic, but, uh, it didn't seem to appear that way early for them. At the same time, I thought by the end of the game, that defensive line played really well, and and, and so did the defensive back. So, it, um, like you say, again, going back, it's the tale of two halves, um, and the Bears did kind of gift us a little bit with maybe some either some bad decisions or maybe just some nerves, perhaps. Like you said, if, if they um, – I think if they run – uh, what is it, with two and a half minutes left in the game? Um, I think it's a third and two, something to that effect. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think if they run there, they take some yeah. time off the clock and yeah. they perhaps get that first down. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why they didn't do that. The, are these like, um, and well, and and I, they, I think they had a fourth and one, and they, they, like the Packers had a fourth and one. I, For the life of me, it's fourth and one, you go for it. You have to have a super compelling reason for to to not. It almost never makes sense to not go for it. I will never understand that ever. Uh, you know, if oh you're you want to punt it, okay, well, um, you know, yep, you're afraid your your guys are terrible and they're going to commit a penalty, um, okay, um, but you take the ball and you you toss it down the field and you have an opportunity to make a play on it. If you, if especially if you have Aaron Rodgers, but Trubisky yeah. was mo- moving the ball too. I, I just, I don't understand the 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 conservation from either coach, especially later in the game. I totally do not understand that. Right, and I think many coaches in this league, when they when they look at game planning against Green Bay's defense, I think the number one thing that they're looking at is, can we run the ball? In number one, do we have a capable running game? And if you do, you pound the ball against that defense because. Up until, you know, the second half, they did okay, but they still had some holes and some leaks in, in the in the back end. But uh, up until this point, our run defense has been very, very much below average, uh, mostly because we just haven't had the uh, the manpower up front to uh, to withstand blocks and hold blocks and let our linebackers make plays, which, you know, that's another whole other topic. Well, linebackers, do we have linebackers? I, you know, I don't know, but... Um, yeah, I just want to, you know, reiterate that, you know, if you go in against Green Bay, teams are going to want to uh, just pound the ball because you have to make us prove that we can stop anybody on, uh, you know, stopping the run. Yeah, I kind of killed your outline. Sorry, Jeremy. No, no, <laughs> we, can, we can flip around. I mean, we're, we're kind of, well, I just like to, I like to take the outline and put it into the show notes. So, um, yeah. So anyway, maybe, well, maybe, maybe that'll be fixed. Maybe it won't be, but no. let me, let me close it right. No, I'll close it this way. Um, I, I did keep some stats and as you know, I'm a, I'm a stat guy. I like stats, but um, the very first two drives for the bears, obviously they scored 10 points. Mm-hmm. Um, they gave the, the, the Packers defense gave up a total of 139 yards, eight first downs. Uh, the bears were three for four on third down. Um, and they gave up a staggering 7.7 yards per play. Um, <laughs> wow. Which in the NFL, that will that will not work, you know, mm-hmm. but that could be attributed to Patton just kind of playing very vanilla and just kind of feeling it out. Yeah. After the 10 0 lead that the Bears put up, uh, their next six possessions, they didn't do anything. The yeah. the next possession after that, three plays, four yards. Uh, the next possession after that was uh, four plays, negative three yards, and then three plays, five yards, and then uh, 12 plays, 60 yards, where they, they got the field goal to put them up 23-17. Uh, then the next play was three th- – or next series was uh, three plays, eight yards, and three plays, nine yards. So really, I think to Jay's point, uh, you know, the defense really stepped it up in the second half and, and, and forced them – into longer downs uh, and distances, um, you know, instead of those manageable third and twos, third and threes that they were getting yeah. in the first half. Right. That, that to me was the most noticeable um, aspect of defense was that the, in the first half, you could see these third, these third, third, uh, third and twos, um, second and two. Uh, then you'd see, uh, and, and then in the second half, those distances were longer on third down. 
Right. And and that, it, that seemed like a hard won uh, little uh, factoid there for the Packers. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, again, tail two halves again, but um, that's a fascinating uh, note on the 7.7 yards per play. I I was I was actually very shocked by that um, because in this day and age, if if that's what you're giving up per play in the NFL, um, <laughs> the the odds of you doing well for, in, during the season are. I'm, very, not, I'm very not shocked. Small. I'm not shocked. They <laughs> they moved it right down the field. I mean, it was just it yeah. was sickening. No doubt. Yeah. And so, do you think we can attribute any of this? Uh, because I think we went into the year. Um, with him, with him, with some high expectations, obviously for our defensive sure. line. Uh, but do you think Clay Matthews? Uh, do you think he can pull out uh, of his funk and actually be a productive player and maybe get some sacks no. here and there? Or do you feel like he is done? He's done. He was he was below zero in that game. Well, you know, uh, I I felt like he is a symptom, uh, like a symptom of. I think what the Packers uh, defense looked like uh, for the for, for let's say the, most of the night. Uh, I saw guys falling down on running plays behind behind the runner. Uh, I saw guys getting you know they were getting blocked to the ground, and then included Matthews, and um, and he was called out for for a number of those kinds of plays. But it wasn't just him, and and that's where again there were so many breakdowns early for the Packers that I think everyone looks to Matthews as a playmaker to no. you know rise above those kinds of mistakes. And and I so I, I again I think there's a natural progression or or I should say a regression for a player like Matthews. He's 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 been a long time in now, and 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 frankly I thought I felt like he among other players has been wasted in these all these number of years in utilizing his best years. And so those best years are behind him. I, hopefully he does show up. I, I think he's still got it, at, or, you know, the ability to make plays. Because um, you can still see how I, – he made a tackle in last night's game that I thought I didn't see from other linemen or linebackers. Um, it was the only tackle, I think. But um, I, I see that. I saw that in him last year, uh, you know, and, and of course the year before, um, I think we expect, you know, all world statistics from him. And so the expectation is much greater for him, but I think, you know, he's up to, up to this year, he's, he's been a good player. And um, I think that the expectation is it's sort of related, or I think a similar subject might be AJ Hawk, you know, and it's a different, wholly different kind of an ability of, of a, player but the expectation with AJ Hawk was that he was drafted number five number four something like that and so he should perform uh you know to that status as a as a high draft pick but he was never that player uh from day one and and so the expectation changes the perception I think and I think that's what it is with Matthews now he's he's a little older and so you're gonna you, you know he's going to break down and uh, on, you know, on, maybe on some days he might be better than others, but uh, it is a contract year. And so uh, for him, it'll be, you know, um, hopefully making some plays and, and earning uh, his next contract, but it may, it may not happen for him. It's not going to happen here in green Bay. I mean, <laughs> um, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Uh you know, when when we drafted Clay in the 2009 NFL draft, I, I was ecstatic because we got the Matthews blood, you know. Um, yeah. If anybody knows the the Matthews brothers, uh, you know, sure. you probably know them better than I do, Jay. The Matthews yeah. always played the game at 100%. They played at 100 miles an hour, and they had yeah. just great football instincts, you know. And, and even up to the last snap of their career, they were playing the game with, yeah. you know, with a lot of confidence and a lot of sure. swagger. Um, so when you see... And I think the expectation in Green Bay, obviously, because we didn't really do a lot on the front end uh, to to you know to improve the depth at the outside linebacker position. Um, you know, we definitely improved the back end with all the the rookie cornerbacks um, 
and, and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, you, you know, the expectation is that Clay Matthews is going to be your stud, that he's going to be your, your double digit or your, you know, your over 10 sack guy. Um, yeah. So when he doesn't produce that and the contract that he is actually, you know, that he's um, in the last year of uh, when he first signed that, that made him one of the highest paid players in the league. And with that, that highest paid player status, you, you have a, an ex, an exorbitant amount of expectations to live up to. And this is what Khalil Mack has to live up to in Chicago. Now, Clay yeah. Matthews is on the tail end of it, obviously, but that's the expectation is that he's going to be your, your 10 to 15 sack guy. And when he doesn't do that, or even show a pass rush, there's a huge uh, uh, pause and a huge concern because we don't really have anybody else that we can count on. I mean, Nick Perry is, is average at best. Um, he has his moments. And then behind that, who do we have? You know, yeah. um, it, it's a huge cause for concern because the pass rush, everything is predicated off the pass rush and getting pressure on the quarterback and making that offense feel completely uncomfortable and not allowing them to get in any rhythm. And I just, at so far, I just have a feeling that we don't have that pass rush that can put the fear in the opposing quarterback's eyes, um, yeah, and, and and you know make us make that make them feel scared to go, to go up against us. I just don't feel like we have that right now. All he had, all he had last night was a blatant late hit. I don't know what it looked like on TV. Oh, it was horrible. But but from from the stands, he sure. he stuttered because he knew and then he went for it yeah oh. uncalled for i mean in a way anybody who does that should be thrown out of the game like it, it was blatant it was terrible and you know, it, uh, it, it i expect uh, a lot better it wasn't on screen because the, the the you know the the cameras follow the ball and the ball you know was up in the air uh, yeah the incompletion that it was a good defensive play ba- made by our, our cornerback uh, i think it was cornerback and then um and then the idea that hey we did it uh the game is essentially over now uh we're yeah. you know, we're gonna get the ball back on downs or what have you and um <laughs> and the thought occurs in the back of your mind almost immediately um Hopefully the defense didn't commit a penalty. Yep. Uh, yep. No, no, uh, no. So I will tell you that was, it was hell because everyone in front of me, they were cheering and turning around doing the high fives. And I'm like, there's a flag, dude. Oh. <laughs> and they're like, what, what flag? And I'm like, it was Matthews. He was uh, a t- terribly TV, blatant. Late hit. Yeah. On the, on the, broadcast it was like the very last second the 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 uh, flag appearance you yeah. know uh i think al michaels you know oh there's a flag or it was collinsworth but it it came up you know came out to the last minute at least as far as uh our awareness of it and you know your 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 heart and mind sink immediately because you think they're doing it to Aaron again. They're the defense is letting him down again, mm-hmm. and he right. produces some kind of magic, and they're just gonna fail. And so they, it, as as all the talk shows have said in the in in the last let's say twenty four hours, um, you know Matthews owes Perry uh, some kind of uh, gift, and um, you know like. Like uh, Steve Homer True from ES in Milwaukee said, he owes him a hundred thousand dollars and a and a SUV. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah, you know, I, wasn't, and, and, I wasn't even being that harsh. I said he should have been booted from <laughs> the, the rest oh, of the game and <laughs> well, be fine. <laughs> he also added that he owes the the uh, the de- the rest of the defensive line uh, something similar. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because and yeah, I thought he might have made a great point, and that is that this would have been his defining moment. And you know, I can think of some other great plays he's made over his career, but this would have been the one that defined him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I you know I I think uh, the the pressure, and if Matthews doesn't want to admit it, then whatever. But the pressure is on him. He knows that. Uh, he's he's not performed, and he knows that he's um, he's completely not living up to his family lineage. I mean, it, 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 it's just it's not there, you know. So I I think he's definitely um, 
I think the pressure is kind of getting to him in a way, you know, because I just don't see how somebody tails off from being an explosive pass rusher to not getting off the ball as quick as he used to, you know, I yeah. mean, he, he hasn't lost that much speed. There's just no way in hell that you've lost that much speed. Um, and, and well, I, still... I feel that it's, yeah, you know, I honestly feel like the linebackers, uh, it, it, look at the look at the Seattle defense. You know, I I knew they were gonna, I knew that they were gonna trickle. You know, they were gonna trail away um, in a in only a few years. I knew that mm-hmm. because you know, as hard as they hit, as many as many scrums as they would get in, and as dominant as they were, that takes a physical toll. And eventually, you you know, you, they'll lose a half step, they'll lose some of that strength, or at least they'll get bruised and injured and lose effectiveness and so I, I think that there's a natural kind of regression I mean look at a, a player like Adrian Peterson who actually had some good numbers yesterday apparently mm-hmm. uh, but here's an all-world player uh, suffered through some injuries um, came back strong but um, naturally you hit people that many times and you're gonna you know you lose some performance I think James Starks is a perfect example of that as well he um he trailed away after a few years i still felt like when they let him go that he still had he was still effective packers have a way of letting players go before their their end date is actually arrived but um uh it, it, so it happens um i i think you're i think you're right i think he has pressure and that he needs to perform and and i i hope he does and I, he is one of my favorite players because he's been you know, he's, he's one of those symbols of their identity, you know, their, their culture, uh, teams get an identity with players who are, you know, like Aaron Rodgers and, uh, Clay Matthews and, you know, in the past, Reggie White and Brett Favre, um, they make up, um, the identity of a team. And when you lose a player like that, when you lose Charles Woodson, you're not just losing leadership or playmaking ability, you're losing your identity. And when you lose that, I think, then you know uh, teams you play and and even the fans uh, and the team itself um, lose that sense of identity and so I think if you lose Clay Matthews you have to find someone who has that same kind of sort of power um, you know to not only produce but but provide that kind of identity. I think those are all great points, Jay, and 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 I think the scary thought of it is after this season. Um, just the, just the way that the roster is configured right now, uh, they have quite a few needs. So yeah. <laughs> you, you throw this in the bucket of another need, and it just gets to the point where the needs just become so overwhelming. And this is where, sure. you know, if we don't trade those two first round draft picks, and, and luckily we still have those, but, you know, hopefully those two first round draft picks will be valuable con- contributors uh, to the team in the, in the foreseeable future because we need them right now, you know. How do you guys feel about um, Khalil, uh, Khalil Mack, right? Um, mm-hmm. I, so the Packers had been in pursuit of him, and mm-hmm. the idea that they were going to have to pay him a lot of money that was going to make it difficult uh, to either sign other players or, or continue to draft and develop um, real talent in the future – uh, or that they would have to trade away that those draft picks for him. Uh, that was all a question. But I think that I think that Khalil Mack showed up and he expressively um, delivered in a way that said, "Well, here's what I'm worth, and I'm worth every penny." Um, even though I still felt that Kaiser had pretty much handed yeah, him a couple right. of those big big plays yeah, with his. Too. I'm, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the stats at the interception and the fumble. They were they were both Kaiser, right? So. Yeah, <laughs> and they're they're clearly in those in both instances they're clearly a, a quarterback who's in over his head. This is Hunley part two, and again, it, to me, it's a an indictment of McCarthy in that he thinks he's going to develop this guy into a player again like Hunley, and and he's fooling himself. However, uh, on the subject of Cleo Mack, to see Kaiser hand him those two balls was just uh, frustrating. And so at the same time, to see this guy, wow, uh, I felt like, yeah, this is – so this is exactly what we need from 
from Clay Matthews and yes. and uh, and like you say, it it you if he's not performing, he's taking up a space where we need to bring in someone who can. And that's a real good point. Well, right. you know, I it was it was uh it was startling the difference because you know we have <laughs> the, uh, you know we well we talked about a tale of two halves. It was a tale of two number fifty twos also. Yeah. And, mm. and, you know, I'm looking at their number 52 and I'm looking at our number 52 and, uh, boy, I would trade them. I would swap spaces any, oh. any second yeah. without hesitation. And I mean, the, the price they paid was huge though. So, I mean, we'll see, you know, and we won't see right away. We'll see a year, two years, well, three years from now. Like well, that, what did that end up being the right thing? That's, that's, see, that's my question to you guys is that like you're saying, is it the right thing? I, I think it's the right thing, and I think it, even if it means um, if, if it means mortgage, mortgaging your future, um, I think that's okay because the nature of the draft and the nature of uh, you know the collective bargaining agreement is one that I think no matter what position you're in, you're going to have a struggle to sign all the kind of talent you want, and so you might as well overspend. Uh, for a player that you that you think you need to gamble on, or yeah. who you know is who can play, and and if you're going to have to suffer uh, player development on some other uh, level of the team, so be it. Because in the end, I think a guy like Mac will make enough plays on the field himself uh, to really, in a way, make up for your lack of talent or depth. Uh, behind him, um, it, either at the same position or along the line. It, it that's a good point. Um, I, I think uh, Elliot was probably sick and tired of me talking about Khalil Mack and the trade rumors, <laughs> and uh, you know the fact that we were actually going to possibly be the running for him. Uh, I was a big proponent of actually going after Mack um, for the first for the two first round draft picks that we had uh, next year. Um, I guess the contract kind of wowed me. I, I didn't think he was going to get over, over yeah. $20 million. Yeah. Um, and the signing bonus really put it over the top. Uh, yeah. Take in consideration, we just paid Aaron Rodgers $57.5 million, and now you're going to throw $60 million, Excuse me, it was uh, yeah, right. $90 million guaranteed for Mac. But the $60 million to sign him, you're talking over $115 million uh, that – you're just you're you're handing right over just to sign a contract. That would be that was my tipping point of saying whether it was worth it or it wasn't, uh, because now you've just tied a shit ton of money to two players, yeah. and this does limit your flexibility with future caps. It does limit your flexibility um, in 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 player development, like you were talking about, Jay. Uh, we have, you know. We don't have many strength on, on the team. You know, we have a one of the we have the league's best quarterback. Um, but at, besides that, everything else is very wishy washy. We don't have top tier talent. You know, it, I would I would I would venture to say we don't have top five talent at any other position besides maybe left tackle. So uh, in Bakhtiari. Um, so in that respect. Would Mac help this team out? He would help out tremendously. Is he a guy that could just take this team on his on his shoulders and and, and make this defense a, a top ten defense? There's no doubt he probably would do that. But I think in the end of the day, uh, you know, at the end of this year, uh, Matthews will be gone. Uh, Cobb will be most likely be gone. Um, we don't have a lot of depth at the receiver. We have a lot of unknown there, and we have a lot of guys who have the capability to do it, but we don't have any knowns yet, and we have a lot of unknowns on this team. So for me, I was all about getting Mac, but when it had to come to the financials and it had to come to giving him a bigger signing bonus than, than Aaron Rodgers received, I, I think that was just too much to take on. Well, the the thing about signing bonuses that is interesting to me is, I mean, it, it I think it's it's tiered, right? So there's mm -hmm. the the idea that you're committing guaranteed money uh, to a player who could conceivably get injured, and then 
there's the idea that that guarantee there's the other on the other end of the spectrum there's the idea that that guaranteed money can be moved around in in creative ways to allow a team to uh to call it something uh they can call it a bonus they can call it you know some sort of uh, salary or or what have you uh where they can again not necessarily count all of it against the cap and so that kind of creativity i think is something that um guaranteed money allows teams to do they um however um it does mean that you're you're putting your your team at risk in a sense or your your future at risk a little bit cause, you know because the players can get injured and and it then they do and i i think if 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 we sit here now and we just we realize that the window of opportunity for this team is probably quite short you know i mean aaron side for six years but uh you know based off of the offensive line performance we can't be guaranteed that he's going to be <laughs> healthy for a full six years um you know the or, or for a full six minutes there, <laughs> you, go. <laughs> there you go so you know uh, it, it's yeah oh I, I, you yeah. know, it, we, the thought. window of opportunity, I, I'm sorry, I tra- lost my train of thought. The window of opportunity there um, is, is definitely, uh, it's, it's going away, you know. Um, so in that respect, uh, you know, bringing Mac in would have increased the chances of possibly getting another Super Bowl with Aaron at quarterback. But also, um, you know, like you, like you mentioned, Jay, it would have been a huge financial risk. Um, yeah. We could we could talk about this all day long, and I think we all have valid, valid, valid points. In the end, we don't have them. Um, we we have to worry about what, what we have currently, you know. And I'm going to kind of steer us back um, to the other side of the ball uh, sure. because yeah. we talked about the defense plenty enough, but uh, there were some huge concerns on offense. And I, you know, let's let's start off right at the top. Aaron Rodgers. Um, we don't know the extent of the knee injury that he suffered. Uh, it didn't look good. Um, just on TV, I mean, I don't know what you saw at the game, Elliot, but on TV, it did not look good. Um, and then when he was coming off the field, his mannerisms mannerisms were uh, very telling to me where if he felt like, you know, he, he just didn't feel like he'd be able to come back. But um, I will say that we paid this man a lot of money. and expecting uh justin mccray um to be that guy at right guard uh it, it's 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 gonna fail on them and i think it did last night i think he got completely uh just dominated in all facets the passing game uh yeah. the rushing game i think um akeem hicks was just having his way with him um yeah. in fact he was the gentleman um that allowed the rusher to hit Rogers on the play that, that hurt Rogers. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, he didn't, he didn't slide over. It was a stunt um, and he didn't slide over to pick up the the trailing guy that came around um, and he left him to a wide open path to Aaron and an unfortunate incident, you know? So as we stand here today, how confident do you guys feel that, uh, you know, we're going to have Aaron going forward and will it restrict our, our, our play calling um, where, you know, a lot of our, our offensive play calls are predicated on him getting outside the pocket, you know, um, do you think this restricts them in any way, shape or form? Go ahead, Jay. Uh, I think it does. Um, I don't think that necessarily has to be a bad thing, but I think it does. I think if they're smart, it restricts them. And if, and I think if Aaron Rodgers is, is, you know, concerned about himself, then yes, they should. Um, and they proved at the end uh, in the in the last half that they can function with a sort of an abbreviated game or a, an abbreviated sort of catalog of plays. But at the same time, <laughs> um, Aaron Rodgers still plays like Aaron Rodgers, even with one leg. And um, the fascinating thing was he could not step into those throws last night. Uh-huh. And uh some i've heard already in the last day that you know some people express how mccarthy's underrated for rearranging the game plan and and going to the pistol and um and showing that he could uh you know change uh his mindset 
uh, from one half to the next. But I, I don't, again, I don't think that that shows any of his larger con conceptual ability what Aaron Rodgers did last night. Aaron Rodgers made plays out of the sheer, <laughs> the sheer, you know, magic in his, you know, his eyes and hands and, and, uh, and, you know, his, his throwing ability, his passing ability is just, uh, it, it's amazing. And, and so the magic that he produced, I think was not in the play calling. It was in him sneaking a ball into Randall Cobb between two defenders and Randall Cobb running straight up field to, you know, to, uh, to, uh, what do you call it? To daylight. And then, and then on the other end, Geronimo Allison making spectacular plays, uh, yeah. as I've always felt he's done when given the opportunity. Um, of course, last year, Rogers being gone, um, yeah. Allison was pretty, pretty much ignored. And, uh, and, and so was Cobb actually last year. Um, and so I think the three of them really showed up big in that second half. They made plays. Aaron Rodgers made plays. They did it out of the sheer, in a way, drawing it up in dirt, and that may be the way they have to play the rest of the season. So, I, yeah, it, I would agree. So, so one quick thing uh, at at the stadium, from at least from up up in the the seats we were in, um, I didn't I didn't have any clue how how bad that was. They didn't replay that they replay that on the on the big screen at all. The, the knee, the injury, yeah, mm -hmm. at all. They didn't even show a quick replay of it in the first place. He went down, and it was like radio silence on that. I, I don't know why. I think that's part of what Lambo. you know, maybe there's a, how I say, a procedure. Because I, I was at the game uh, against the Bears, what was that, five years ago? When, yeah. was it McClellan landed on top of them? Yeah. And that was his, that was, what was that? It was the first shoulder, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, the Packers scored a touchdown on that play and the the stadium was rejoicing and I was on the other end of the stadium in the end zone and, and so on the far end of the field, all this action going on, we had no clue. And then mm -hmm. only when uh, the Bears came all the way down, scored a touchdown immediately afterward and in the confusion of how did the Packers let this happen, um, oh. they go to commercial break and build charts on the overhead speaker announces, ladies and gentlemen, coming in for quarterback, Seneca Wallace. <laughs> yeah. And your, your mind just goes immediately to what the yeah. blank. And so I think it sounds like the similar, you had a similar occurrence last night. Yeah, I, I, it was, um, I mean, we, I mean, once, once he, uh, once he was down and we could see that like that, I mean, we, we, we knew he'd be out for a little bit. Right. Cause they, there's, they gotta be out for at least a play or whatever. Right. But, right. um, so I didn't think much of that cause he got up and you know, whatever he was limping a little bit, but it, it, whatever, you know, sometimes that happens. And, uh, you know, I thought maybe, yeah, maybe he could shake it off. I, I didn't know. Um, but then they, they got the little, uh, the little, uh, truck to take him out and i'm like yeah. wait well no no <laughs> they they got to get rid of the truck <laughs> you know they got to not do that anymore ever oh my god it's 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 terrible and uh it was i mean the the whole the demeanor of i'm sure the whole stadium but our section anyway oh it was it was just unbelievable yeah. It was just uh, just the the downest of downs. But then, well, then on the other end, how was it when he came back? Did you did you feel the excitement then? Um, so it, it grew because, like, as things are going, uh, you know, we everybody's checking their, you know, they're 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 doing their searches on their phones, <laughs> and so so then so then somebody said, "Hey, he might come back, might be back <laughs> in the second half," or and we're just like, "I don't know." They you know they yeah. wheeled him off, so where it was confusion. But then when he came back, it was crazy. It was pandemonium when he was like on the field. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You never appreciate anybody until they're gone, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, and it, it's it's a, a clear Willis Reed moment, man. And um, and you know, it's uh, again Steve Homer Truitt, ESPN Milwaukee, uh, said the 
magnitude of his comeback, the greatness of it, will be measured by the severity of his injury in the days ahead. So uh, if, if the injury becomes worse, the, the magnitude of his, of his comeback will be greater and more legendary. And uh, I would hate to see that, of course. <laughs> so in other words, I'm thinking, well, let it be less legendary, but it yeah. certainly is legendary right. to me. And, and at the same time, um, it, it was a moment that reminded me of the only other comparison I can make. I'm sure there's a bunch that have that actually occurred in games where players came back. But the only thing that I could think of is something that Steve Homer True brought up, and it was that in the years since Tiger Woods won, the, I think it was the 2009 U.S. Open, uh, you know, the toughest golf tournament to win. Um, I remember that event, and, and I, you could see he was suffering on every single shot, and you could tell that in some cases he doubled over in pain. And you thought, well, he's, he's Tiger Woods. He, he's too tough for this, and, and he'll, he'll finish whether he wins or loses. Um, it's, it's just a matter of him kind of seizing the moment, and he certainly did that. And he won this uh, in, in a uh, – he won the U.S. Open in 2009 on a uh, – it was a playoff, I believe. And so it was, it was magical then because he, he, he pulled out some shots that were just, again, clear Tiger Woods magic, one of a kind, one, you know, once in a million. And uh, in the year since, it was revealed that he had not only a – a torn ACL uh, in the weeks prior to that and, and during that event, but he also broke his leg. He had a fracture in his leg. So he had a torn ACL and a fracture in his leg while he was playing this incredible, terribly tough tournament. And, I, again, I, I think that this is kind of what that reminded me of. Well, I think um... – I don't know if you guys heard the interesting stat, uh, how historic last night was for the Packers. Yes. <laughs> Did you hear? In, in I don't know. I don't know. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. That okay. one. Yeah. Yeah. One of the 107 <laughs> previous games uh, where we trailed by 17 heading into the fourth quarter, oh. we were zero wins and 107 losses. <laughs> yes. How, how is that possible with far the greatest comeback quarterback? <laughs> He was he was good in his time, but he did not come back from anything more than seventeen points heading into the fourth I can, quarter. I can count on one hand the number of comebacks he's had in his career. This is a this is a very uh, famous J trope. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not the outside five at all. So. You, to, you, you totally teed him up, Jeremy. You totally, <laughs> yeah. the, the, here comes the half hour. This is our half hour rant. <laughs> here comes. Here comes the rant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you can go back to 93. You can go back to uh, 99. And, I was joking, and... Jay. I was joking. We don't need <laughs> <laughs> oh, No, I, so we're, we're closing in on an hour, and I promised you guys only about an hour. So uh, so actually, uh, so on, on Jeremy's outline, um, and, and you're going to come back and talk about your, your whole five thing. Cause it's, it's accurate, <laughs> accurate and interesting. And you know, I agree with you. So anyway, so the, uh, uh, the division game against Minnesota, this is on the outline. Okay. Keys to beating Minnesota. Go Keep ahead. Be, guys. Keeping that defense off of Aaron. Mm. That's what it all comes down to. Yeah. I think that the, it's the, yeah, the defensive line versus the offensive line. Mm-hmm. It always starts up front. Um, it seems like in the recent Viking Packer uh, history, um, the team that had uh, the best up the best game up front, whether it was their offensive line or defensive line, uh, seemed to come out on top. Um, you know, so I think you're right, Jay, that the game is going to be one in the trenches in this one. Uh, you know, I think Elliot early in the show hinted that uh, Minnesota's offense isn't that dynamic. And I think that's a good point as well. Um, it'll be a, a, a good game to see what Kirk Cousins can do because uh, there's a lot of hype and a lot of, you know, a lot of expectation placed on him that he was going to come here um, and, and bring them to the Super Bowl. So this is a start for him as well. And after week one, they're still favored. Um, 
but the interesting thing, I just looked up the the Vegas odds uh, as of right now. Uh, it's basically even odds. Packers are are favored oh. by you know by one. <laughs> so they're, they're waiting. They're waiting to see basically what's going to happen with Rodgers. I mean, a home victory gives you three points. So if it's, if right. it's one right now, they're favoring right. the Vikings. But basically, yes, yes. But it's basically even odds. And but that's I don't know where everybody's heads are at. I mean, I'm assuming he's going to play, but they want to keep it ambiguous as long as they can. I, I think that that, you know, that if that's a tactic they can use, they should use it. I agree with that. But, you know, what else do you have to hide about Aaron Rodgers? There's know. nothing left to hide. I mean, he is what it is. He is the best quarterback in the league. And I get that, you know, teams have to plan for that. But it's not like you're hiding you know, this, this, um, great reliever on the bench. That's just waiting to come in that's and save true. the game. That's a good know? point. Yeah. I was um, thinking that through, as I said, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good point. It's just, I, I don't know how much more you can hold back from, from opponents, how much more information you can hold back when you have 10 years of tape on him, you have, you, know, you have three, yeah. you know, you have multiple MVPs on, on his docket. So this guy has done enough. You don't, this yeah. defense is a top it's 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 a, last year was the number one rated defense in the league you're not gonna confuse them you're not gonna break them down i mean honestly saying that aaron is gonna play or not play they're gonna go into this planning on aaron playing there's no ifs ands and buts about it so yeah. that's probably the safe bet anyway yeah yeah because they i mean they know they don't have to worry about kaiser um at this right. point so, you know, their biggest concern is worrying about 12, um, you know, containing him. They're not worried about number nine. They are not worried about number nine. So you're not going to you're not going to hold anything back from the Vikings by holding the or, you know, delaying this uh, inevitable um, conclusion out. Well, I, I believe in the Mike McCarthy quarterback school. <laughs> No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I, don't. I was just gonna blow you up there, <laughs> but because I was but, gonna uh, take over. But first. I do. Okay. But uh, uh, all right. So I'm. Uh, uh, I'm. I'm. I, I believe green gold. So uh, regardless, I would like for Kaiser to have the best game of his career next week if he's on the field. <laughs> um, and I think he has it in him. I mean, honestly, I think I think putting him in into the situation that he was in in the opening game. I think like that, that was like, that was undoable for any backup. I mean, you could mm -hmm. put, you know, the best backup out. I mean, Garoppolo, maybe not. I mean, I, I feel like he's just a, you know, he's one of those rare ones. I, I feel like Garoppolo went up against yeah. Vikings and almost won. So, I mean, they're, they're beatable. Um, I, yeah. yeah. Well, I, you know, Garoppolo, I think is a good example of a player who was, who was ready uh, when his time came and, and, and it wasn't that long uh, for him to, to meet that moment, um, I don't think Kaiser really has the future that McCarthy sees in him. I know he sees uh, his potential and his abilities, but clearly, uh, again, uh, watching, you know, again last night, Kaiser's decision making in the moment when, you know, when the rubber meets the road, he 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 folded like a, you know, like a like a, a cheap uh, lawn chair. And, and um, I mean, it wasn't even just making a bad throwing decision uh, 20 yards down the field or not seeing some sort of weird blitz package uh, or picking it up or calling out the right, you know, right beef, uh, the right uh, offensive uh, line package to protect himself. He, he couldn't handle Khalil Mack coming at him and basically said, here, take the ball. And uh, that kind of inability to meet the moment, uh, the pressure of the moment is, to me, it's telling. And, and again, I think it speaks to um, McCarthy's uh, sort of myopia. Um, that said, on the other end, I think Minnesota is kind of, I don't know, I, I think they traded, they traded the same court, they, say, they traded quarterbacks who have the same abilities essentially. Um, and I think Keenan outplayed Cousins last year. Um, and I think Keenan in a way uh, uh, is someone to root for between the two. Cause I, th I, I think that yeah. the Minnesota Vikings did not trade up when they got Cousins. I think they got the exact same kind of quarterback that they had in Keenan. Yeah, I agree. 
Yeah, I don't see much difference. I, I really don't know what I, – I don't get what they got out of that deal. Yeah. But, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what that is. So um, anything else? Uh, on the game, I I, uh, I hope that you know I think that Rogers is going to play, but then again, um, uh, the Packers uh, doctors uh, have um, they're sort of like uh, the Wizard of Oz. They are the people behind the curtain. So who knows? Um, I know Rogers sounds confident that he's going to play, um, but McCarthy today made some funny comments about we're gathering information. So. Uh, who knows where this goes? Um, I think he's going to play, and and I think if he plays, it, I think it's actually kind of, in a way, it feels a little bit dangerous. Um, but if he gets through this week, and let's say they win, uh, it could speak very well of of what their season, um, you know, beholds. Well, yeah, I'll, I think you're right, Jay. I mean, it, to start the year off two and zero, and especially in the division, um, yeah. that in, that increases your odds exponentially. That uh, you know, at the end of the year, you're going to be um, winning the NFC North. Um, you know, that's a huge way to start the year, especially with the rolling of emotions that we've dealt with thus far. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, I think he will play as well. Um, but, you know, he wouldn't have played last night if it was an ACL, if it was an Achilles. No, I don't think he would have been able to, yeah. No, you know, but, I mean, I've had uh, an MCL injury, and yeah. it's, it, it, it seems very reminiscent of that type of injury where maybe he sprained it or something like that. Even if he tore it, that'd be, you, he, I don't think you would be able to play with that because that, yeah. that takes a stability out of your knee on the outside of the knee. Mm-hmm. Um, so... You know, it it really depends on what the, the prognosis of of all these you know information gatherings that Mike Carthy's talking about. But I mean, if he played last night, we know it's not major. Um, you know, we know it's not an ACL. Uh, but you know, it's going to be um, he's going to be restricted. Um, and it, we just got to hope that our offensive line protects a lot better than they did last game. And McCarthy yeah. cannot be cannot be so against wanting to help his offensive line. Um, and, and he's done this over the years, you know, back in, in uh, 13 or 14, whatever it was, when we went up to Seattle for the very first game of the year and Derek Sherrod came in uh, for Bulaga, who was hurt. And, I mean, Cliff Averill just went to town on him. And then yeah. we just – the game just got out of hand for us, you know. And, and he never, ever gave Derek Sherrod any help, whether it was a chip with a tight end or a running back. And McCarthy's got to get that bullheadedness out of him and say, hey, you know what? I expect our five guys to be able to hold up, but sometimes they can't. And sometimes I have to give them a little bit of help just to protect yeah. our franchise, who is yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Well, maybe uh, maybe then uh, Mercedes Lewis and and uh, um, uh, and the other guy. Uh, um, the, the other guy they, yeah, uh, no, actually, Sagan? Oh, uh, Lance Kendricks. Uh, who's the 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 top uh, top tight end they got? Oh, Jimmy Graham. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jimmy Graham. Uh, even though they're two ends of the spectrum, um, Mercedes Lewis is a is a great blocking tight end, and um, and Graham, the offensive sort of vertical uh, tight end, maybe the two of them together, one blocking, one uh, you know getting the checkdowns um, that might provide the kind of uh, relief that Rogers need. I hope so because last night uh Mercedes Lewis played seven plays. Uh Kendrick's played 16. So uh-huh. I was really shocked by that when he when they came out in the first uh first series and Kendrick's was kind of that that uh um that roving uh tight end slash um, fullback, I was like, uh, wait a second, we have the best blocking tight end in the league sitting on the bench. Yeah. What is going right. on here? So I hope that was something else, but you know, I hope that this game that they utilize Mercedes a lot more on the front to, to protect Rogers, uh, because they're going to need to, um, it, they're going to need to get him out there a lot more than seven plays out of the game. Yeah, true that. Uh, so, uh, contrary to the Packers, we have a very deep bench, and I think that uh, our our backup quarterback Jeremy did fabulous, and uh, 
and our our uh I don't know what 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 position we're going to give Jay, but uh I I really appreciate Rob- Jay stepping in and uh Robin, and helping out. Roving sideline reporter. <laughs> 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 with the emphasis on the roving because <laughs> you're, you're you're in beautiful uh austin texas right now so yeah. yeah thanks thanks for calling in yeah uh it's been a, it's been a, a blast and uh you promised to come back right whether we need you or not right <laughs> yeah. at least i would love back in i i would i would yeah i would you know every I would show actually, I, I would uh, I would actually love well I always love your commentary so yeah you should call in Jay but um, but the uh, um, I'd love to see the dynamic of you and Andy so um, cool. so get well cool. soon Andy yes. yeah yeah good luck Andy uh, we'll we'll see you we'll see you out here pretty soon I'm sure and uh, go pack go go pack go go pack go podcast podcast share I know right.